Hello and welcome to News Click. An FIR was filed against the Indian Army after three civilians lost their lives in an incident of open firing in Kashmir. This FIR has been at the heart of a lot of heat debate. And to discuss this, we have with us today Mr. Parvez Imroz. Mr. Imroz is a lawyer and an activist and one of the founding members of Jammu and Kashmir Coalition of Civil Society. He has done groundbreaking work in documenting mass graves in Kashmir and researching human rights violations by the Indian Army. Mr. Imroz has also provided legal assistance to a lot of families in cases of disappearances in Kashmir. So, uh, sir, we today want to talk to you about Shopian and what has happened there recently. And as you know, that now the Supreme Court has stayed any action against any coercive action against the uh, major who was named in the FIR. So what is your opinion on it? Well, it's not surprising here, you know, particularly after 1990, you know, that uh, the way Supreme Court in the Kashmir-related cases have taken a very different position, you know, that's not surprising here. Uh, you see, one thing is that as far the we have the Armed Forces Special Powers Act here, which gives a legal impunity to the armed uh, personnel here, and uh, meaning that they can't uh, be prosecuted, you know, unless there's not a sanction. And uh, the sanction is really uh, given by the Home uh, Ministry, federal government. In fact, that according to Rajya Sabha, <coughs> that uh, the statement recently, they say 50 cases have been uh, signed for the ground of sanction and in, in which uh, 47 they have denied. So question is that is the they have the legal cover and uh, sanction prosecution is very unlikely. <clears throat> but what is very disturbing, I mean that under the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, the investigation is not barred. That the FIR filing an FIR according to Supreme Court uh, judgment in Lalita Kumari, there's a five judge bench. They say that in a cognizable offense, the FIR has to be filed. So even in this case. <clears throat> The Supreme Court's, uh, you know, that uh, order, you know, then uh, which is very disturbing here. Uh, one can understand if there's a prosecution or one can understand that if there's a conviction of the uh, armed person. But even the FR, Supreme Court has order stated it and then uh, that is the uh, very disturbing uh, here. I mean, uh, <clears throat> even in Patribal case, we know that how in Patribal case, finally, that uh, in which the CBI investigation uh, has uh, indicted the five army officials for the extrajudicial killings, taken counter. But even finally, that Supreme Court sent it to the, for the army for court martial, and army didn't conduct the court martial. They, on the contrary, conduct the summary of evidence, which is not the court martial. So uh, now this has been stayed. And, but there was also this uh, magisterial probe, which uh, Mehbooba Mufti had said that, that will be conducted to lead this investigation to its logical conclusion. Do, uh, the Supreme Court order is saying that there cannot be any coercive action against the Army General, but will that order also affect this probe and the investigation in this probe? Because that should technically go on as per it was been happening. Will, will this order then affect this uh, probe as well? You know, normally it is very uh, customary for the government, you know, in a high profile case, uh, the government, state government has been always ordering the uh, mass trial inquiries and uh, most every year we have also the uh, the document that uh, where none of none of the mass trial inquiries finally, uh, I mean, uh, concluded or they have been very effective, you know, that is a very ritual it is just to subside the public anger. These uh, mass these master inquiries have no credibility because uh, another fact is also the army not only in the master inquiry but even in the police investigation they are never cooperating. For example, the police in a lot of cases we have where the police have been uh, asking the army to give the uh, the role uh, uh, of the army personnel there they are not forwarding it them and uh, even the high court has not been very uh, proactive. Actually, the problem is not the legality, the problem is the morality. The moral impunity is an issue for the, uh, before the government. They have the legal impunity, but the way the morale of the army is getting down here, 
that is a bigger challenge for the uh, uh, Indian government. You know, the way uh, people are coming on the streets, people are uh, protesting, agitating, and it is demoralizing the army. And you see the statement of the former defense minister or the uh, military leadership, particularly if you remember that last year when there was a Farooq Dar's case, you know, who was tied with a, a jeep. They're holding the investigation or instead of that uh, 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 taking him to task for making a person who had gone to cast the vote. Uh, and he was rewarded. The army official was made a national hero by the by the Indian government. Yeah, and even uh, he was. Uh, it was said that he should be given the Padam uh, Bush and like that thing. So the government has a big challenge in Kashmir. That is the moral. How they are going to boost the moral of the army? And the right wing government which India has right now, and for them the army can do no wrong. Speaking against the army is unpatriotic. And you question the conduct of the army, whatever they do, you know, if they go uh, killing uh, teenage boys, you know, blinding the uh, girls or blinding the uh, passers by standards by their, by pellet guns, you know, that they are justifying it. So just to boost the morale of the army, they are doing these things, you know. Before 2010, uh, they were the military leadership were saying that it is a terrorism. It is the uh, the terrorist uh, 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 people who are fighting or people who are agitating against that. But after 2010, when there was a millions and millions of people, which was for 2016, they called it agitational terrorism, right? So the question is the how they are going to boost the morale of the army and the army's morale is getting down here. That is a big uh, uh, challenge for the uh, Indian government. And also, uh, coupled with the right-wing uh, um, uh, activists who are uh, uh, making to going to the different institutions, particularly the judiciary, and uh, normally, the ju judiciary of uh, Supreme Court of India, which has, a, which is a very powerful institution, and uh, which uh, on which the people have some hopes, particularly on the Patribal case. But on the Patribal case, even that uh, hope is no more. So now, how are the families of these uh, of the victims who died in Shopian? What do you know how they, how they feel about this FIR and? What the Supreme Court has, uh, uh, the Supreme Court action right now. They know about it. Even uh, one has said that they have no faith on the institutions. And uh, you see, uh, it is not the isolated case. But if we see the conduct of Supreme Court in all the cases from twenty uh, since nineteen ninety, particularly if you remove the Masooda Parveen's case and other matters. Uh, uh, human rights uh, related issues. So they don't have any faith on the institutions. In fact, they uh, they they believe that the Supreme Court has uh, proved more executive than the executive. You no, know, and they have uh, been uh, uh, condoning. So that is a big issue here. They say that if the domestic remedies are the domestic institutions meant to protect their life, right to life and liberties of individual. Uh, so, uh, if they fail to deliver, or if they are not, uh, uh, I mean, um, seeking accountability from the perpetrators, so the, finally, they ca they have the legitimacy. It gives them the legitimacy to go to the international institutions for the uh, international humanitarian, you know, intervention. This is what they are thinking. It's not only the family, but I have been dealing the cases of. <clears throat> Of a lot of uh, people, you know, disappearance, custodial deaths, fake encounter. Take the case of Kunan Pushpara, for example. The Pushpara case was in 1992. And then even Supreme Court has uh, the matters pending in Supreme Court. Even in that case, where more than 40 women were raped, I mean, um, who came forward, it is more than that. Uh, even the matter was stayed, investigation was stayed in that case also. By the High Court here, and even the matter is lying with the Supreme Court from last two years, and so you can imagine that even if the judiciary is 
is uh, staying the investigation in one punun pushpa which was internationally you know uh, i mean uh, there was an international outcry on that so after 26 years the investigation if they allow it that whether the investigation will be concluded people have died victims have died and even after that there are different layers you know for example if the investigation <coughs> is allowed and then there will be sanction though there are different layers you know, for the which are, uh, which are uh, i mean which is very uh, finally helping the perpetrators to get away with the crime they have committed and finally the, we uh, also wanted to ask you about the second uh, petition which has been filed at uh, the national human rights commission this was filed by the children of soldiers saying that what about the human rights of soldiers it was or talking about that what do you have to say about this petition they can file the petition there national human rights commission and uh, but even uh, the national human rights commission uh, <clears throat> is also uh, I mean, it is just as I told earlier, just to uh, boost the morale of the armed forces. And for the National Rights Commission is concerned that they, it, it is an institution which is uh, uh, very selective. Even in Kashmir, uh, the cases pending of the victims uh, who have approached the National Rights Commission or the State Human Rights Commission, which has referred the cases to. Where army, where against army, there are allegations because uh, state human rights commission has, doesn't have any uh, mandate uh, regarding the army officials, but they can refer it to national human rights commission and national human rights commission under, sec- uh, under section 19 can uh, refer it to the army. So I don't think it's one of those. There are a lot of cases which have been sent by state human rights. So the national human rights commission's uh, uh, credibility also, you know, as far as the Kashmir related issues is not very. Uh, uh, up to the mark here, and then uh, these people who are uh, children who have gone there. I mean, they can, but uh, because if the army officials, army persons are, uh, they are. Uh, uh, they, I mean, if there's a violation of them, that is one issue. But what about the victims who have already gone to the National Human Rights Commission? And that is uh, that's why I'm telling you repeatedly. We are telling always repeatedly the institutions. You know. <clears throat> we are saying that the suppression and repression in kashmir is uh, is a systematic and institution meaning that all the institutions of the state whether it is the legislature it is the executive it is the judiciary it is the police it is the army are part and parcel of that that is uh, what we fear because if there is a level of suppression and repression is increasing is intensifying here and then Uh, finally, it is going to take some shape. You know, if we, there will be a Newtonian reaction. You can't expect that government of India believing that they can uh, control people because they only on uh, military solution now, and they believe that you, as long as they are able to control people suffering and miserable, it will be peaceful, right? But it's definitely going to take some. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, we don't know after 2016 what will happen. You know, and. So also, it is going to push the young people to other extreme end. Yeah, there is also the worry of the civil society here. So, uh, uh, and uh, the armed uh, personnel, we have our own experience after two, three years. Particularly the uh, the present government, the, you know, the right wing government, uh, uh, the way they are, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, extending the all sort of impunities. uh to them and uh, it is really uh, they are more aggressive and that's why they are using more uh, force disproportionate force you know uh, on this so uh, thank you sir for talking to us and uh, hope as the issue progresses we hope to see some good positive action and we'll hope to come back to you again and thank you for watching news click